Tonight's video is assisted by a roundabout English dark mild ale from Tark Brewing here in Winnipeg. And they call themselves the mechanics of beer. Uh, 21 IBU, nice and low, not too bitter, reserved, nutty, bespoke, malt forward. Mmm. Tasting the malt, tasting the roastiness, very nice. Not tasting many bespokenesses. Whatever. Um, they're a craft beer. It's all bespoke, bespoke beer, isn't it? Tonight's amusement is a teardown of this little thing that I found in the dollar store. It's called Blink Steps. And what it does is that every time it gets bumped. They're supposed to be for tying to your shoelaces so that when you're uh, walking or jogging or whatever, with every footstep, it does that. Um, but what do we see here? They light up as you move, unthread your laces and uh, rethread with wink steps added to the laces. Uh, we recommend one per shoe if you bought only one pack. Right, okay. Uh, approximately 150,000 flashes of light before the battery fades. Batteries included, batteries are inaccessible and not replaceable. Not water resistant, keep away from open flame, not intended for young children. Uh huh. So let's get in here and see what's going on. First thing we see on the back is there's two batteries. You see what those batteries are? Not easily. They're bigger than LR44. Hmm. And smaller than CO20, CR2032. I'm not quite sure what they are exactly. Actually, yeah, they might be 357s. Okay. Oh, that is, which is also called LR44. What was I thinking of? Oh, I was thinking of LR26s, the smaller ones, right? Anyway, this might be what they are. And it looks like they're spot welded to each other, so they're not salvageable. That would also make it really difficult to replace if you were to crack into the thing. So, other than the batteries, what are we expecting to find in, inside here? Some kind of a vibration sensor. Um, there's a couple of different cheap types that I've seen from China. One is just a metal can with two studs on the bottom and a loose ball bearing in it that just splashes against and makes contact. The other one is a metal cylinder, which is one contact with a little kind of spring down the middle. That's the other electrical contact. And when it gets jostled, that bashes like that. Not sure which one. Um, but that's probably what that little cylinder is up the middle there. Then we've obviously got two 50-50 style LEDs, which have, you can see it in there as they fade out, got three chips each. Um, but you can kind of see contacts in there, three contacts at the top, three at the bottom, so they're three in parallel, which makes sense because we've got three volts-ish there. And a white LED is going to be three-ish volts uh, forward current or forward voltage. So that's probably what's going on there. I'm guessing, by the way they fade out, I'm guessing that there is a capacitor in there that uh, this little switch charges briefly to the batteries. Uh, but I'm also seeing just through there what looks like a little transistor. So I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Time to crack one of these guys open. Not sure. It's obviously glued shut. So I think you have to get a little bit violent, which is fine. I wasn't expecting these to go back together anyway. burst it and that wasn't welded on I was wrong so theoretically those batteries could be replaced okay now what are they really lithium CR1220 oh so they are different than anything I've got they're much thinner than these uh, 357s but they are the same 
or almost the, not the, pretty much the same diameter. All right. So being lithium, hang on, what's the voltage on those then? Because that's not going to be the one and a half volts plus one and a half volts that I thought it was. Yeah, that one's three. So this is a six volt circuit. Huh. Let's see, stack those guys in series. Yeah, that's going to be a six volt circuit. Okay. So I'm wrong already. Let's see what we got on the board here. So there's the vibration sensor. You notice there's one wire going up the center and the other electrical contact is the outer shell. That's going to be that one that's set up like this. Uh, what else we got in here? We have a capacitor, we have the two LEDs, and we have one resistor and one transistor of some description. Transistor is a J3Y. I'll look that up and see what I can find about that, but I'm assuming it's nothing too special. So I'm going to go and look that up, and I'm going to pause and see if I can draw this out. Well, that wasn't that hard to find, actually. Uh, there we are, J3Y, which is actually MMS8050 uh, NPN transistor. So what do we got here? Collector current, uh, half an amp, uh, base collector voltage max, 40 volts. Yeah, this isn't going to exceed that. Um, frequency, 150 megahertz. Yeah. It's just your basic little transistor, nothing special. You probably drop in just about any NPN, and this circuit would work just fine. So I decided to look these uh, these things up just to see what they actually sell for when they're not at a dollar store. And holy hell, thirteen pounds sixty one or fifty one seventy five in whatever that currency is. Uh, apparently, that currency is Emirati Durham, which is. Eighteen and a half dollars Canadian? <laughs> Bloody hell. Who else is selling them? How about eBay? Really guys? Seventeen bucks? Fifteen bucks plus twenty two shipping? Or five pounds ninety five on this uh gift and gadget store? Okay. Hmm. I wonder if the, any of these people are actually selling them or if they've just got them in their shops, because I can't imagine anybody paying that much for them. Or that much course if i was to buy up the stock that the dollar store has and sell them um to the uk market uh, i'd probably still lose money on shipping okay the reverse engineering is done and it's pretty similar to what i thought it was going to be let's just get in here a little bit there we go so uh we have the six volts from two three volt lithium batteries in series we have the little springy uh, vibration switch. We have a capacitor, which is about 7,000 nanofarads, uh, by my measurement anyway. And I think, well, that's measured in the circuit, so some of this stuff might uh, come into play. Um, we have a resistor, which is a uh, 3.3K. We have the NPN transistor. So, um, when, oh, and then we have the LEDs. So, when the switch makes contact, it puts this capacitor in parallel with the batteries and charges that to the full battery voltage, assuming that stays closed long enough, which it should, because it's, well, it's a low resistance path to the batteries that should put a voltage spike on there anyways. So that then discharges through the base resistor, um, the base emitter junction, and through there, through the uh, diodes. But it also, by doing that through the base resistor, turns on this NPN transistor, which is going to stay on until this drops below about 0.6 volts, give or take, because that's the base emitter junction voltage. So when that happens, when the transistor gets turned on, basically it becomes a low resistance path from collector to emitter. Collector is at the full positive voltage, so it's passing that voltage through, 6 volts, through to these two guys in parallel. 
and lights them up. The normally six volts would be enough to make uh, to make these LEDs explode. However, these batteries have enough of an internal resistance that it's not going to be a big deal. And it also doesn't stay at full voltage for very long. As you remember, when you whack these things, they fade down pretty quickly. And as this voltage starts dropping, this transistor is going to stop uh, being fully conductive and move into its linear range. And as you can see them sort of dimming as this capacitor discharges and then they finally shut off again. So when there's nothing happening, when this, this switch is not closed and when this capacitor is discharged, the current draw of this circuit is going to be essentially nothing just whatever the leakage voltage of this or the leakage current of this thing is which is by design transistors when they're off they're off so that's uh those batteries should last quite a while and that's why they get to claim on here that this thing will last for 150,000 flashes because it's not using very much current out of those batteries cool little circuit actually you can implement that with the switch as just about anything it could be any kind of a momentary switch. Um, it could be a reed switch uh, sensing your bike tire spinning so that it flashes once each, or it starts the flash sequence once every RPM your bike tire. That could be interesting. Um, what else? Oh yeah, when I was looking closer at this thing, I noticed that you could actually see the little spring in the middle of this that makes contact and when I when I whack this thing you see it weeble wobbling around in there so it's not making a very hard contact but it doesn't have to nice simple little circuit and a pair of them for a buck how can you go wrong with that especially with the prices that they're charging or that that uh, actual retailers are trying to charge for these things I got a couple of batteries out of the deal that I didn't have previously that's always neat I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but you never know. And maybe I will put this on my hiking boots that I wear when I'm walking the dog at night. Now that winter's coming and night is coming a lot earlier. Well, I hope you found that at least a little bit interesting. <laughs> I like I always like the challenge of reverse engineering something, and that's a pretty simple little circuit. Uh, well, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching. Um, comments, questions down below as usual, and I will talk to you later.